Hi everyone, welcome to our first ever Fall Fiesta. Now my name is Deb Tucker and we here at Studio 180 Design are thrilled to have you taking some of your valuable time to join us. Uh, throughout the three day event, we'll be introducing you to our tools, our techniques and our videos and giving you a quilt show of just some of the beautiful patterns that we've designed. Now this is your golden opportunity to view at your leisure all of the value and all of the success building elements that are in every Studio 180 Design product that are going to help you become that master quilter, that master peacemaker that you always wanted to be. And as you're watching the videos, take a few minutes to jot down any questions and consider joining us on Saturday, December 5th from 12.30 until 1.30 and that's Eastern Time and I'll do my very best to answer any questions that you may have. So sit back, grab a fav your favorite beverage and enjoy the show. For day one of our Fall Fiesta event, we've grouped together demonstrations revolving around our classic fundamental tools. Now these are the basic tools that everybody should have in their toolbox and because they build those basic shapes that you find yourself using over and over again when you're constructing your quilts. These are the tools that I recommend for rookies to start with because you're going to get success without having to spend 20 years of practice. And for you veteran quilters out there, you may just discover the solution to a problem that you've had all these years as you're building your quilts. Now, I'm going to make a recommendation before you get started. Why not download from our website our free Have It, Want It list? That way, if you see something that you're going to want to add to your toolbox, you can add it to your holiday gift list. So enjoy it, everybody, and see you soon. Now my wing clipper tool is a tool that I designed to work with flying geese. Now I know those of you who've been at quilting for a while um, have tried lots of different flying geese tools. You're right, there's a lot of them out there, but this is the only tool I've used for the last 10 years since I've had it on the market. And the wing clipper tool has lots of benefits. It has fine lines, it has 10 different size offerings on it, and it works with that fast flying geese technique that you may or may not have tried in the past. The fast flying geese technique is a method where you start with five squares and you end up with four flying geese. And if you've struggled with this in the past, realize it's not just you that struggles. If you cut those precision, then all the other building steps have to be equally precise for those to all be perfect at the end. Well, I'm a realist, not an idealist. Mine never all turn out right, so I make one small change. I simply oversize my squares at the beginning. If these are too big, then these are gonna be too big, and the perfect happens at the trim down. And that's what the wing clipper is all about. If I'm going to trim down a unit and I happen to be right-handed, what I'm going to do is set the unit up and the tool up horizontally in front of me. I line the appropriate diagonal guidelines up on the seams that are already sewn and already pressed, and I've got enough fabric to be able to trim that down to a precision size. Up and across for right-handed trimming. Now, if you happen to be left-handed, instead of a horizontal placement, you simply place that unit vertically on your mat. That's what's nice about the Studio 180 design tools is that they work equally well for both right-handed and left-handed. Now that's the first trim. Each of those units gets a second trim. So I simply rotate the unit, position the tool, the tool went up and came right back down. The second position, I've got cleanup lines lined up there and an X that lines right up with the top. So I'm not looking at a regular ruler that has lots of horizontal and vertical lines. I'm looking at a tool that's designed specifically for this shape. And we put this on the market, had 10 sizes. I thought that was plenty, but it wasn't on the market but a month or two. And quilters started coming to me saying, you know what, Deb, we want more. So we did create a second tool. The Wing Clipper 2 does nine additional sizes. The original Wing Clipper will build flying geese that are all half inch and whole inch 
one by two, one and a half by three, whole and half inch increments. The Wing Clipper 2 will build nine additional flying geese, but they're flying geese that finished to something and a quarter or something and three quarter. These are two tools. You'll use the one more than you use number two, but boy, when you, you, when you need a flying goose unit that's one and three quarters by three and a half inches, you're gonna wanna have that tool in your hand as well. So for more information on how the tools work and, and the building and the actual construction processes, you can visit my website and watch the full length video tutorial. Our Blockbuster program is truly a hit. Blockbusters are free block designs that we give to you via our Facebook page and they come out every month. Some of the blocks are historical. Most of the blocks are original blocks designed by our youngest certified instructor, Sarah. And always the blocks have units in them that are associated with Studio 180 design tools and techniques and processes. The instructions include um, units that you need to, to build, the size those units need to be, and which tools you'll be using to do the construction. Always there are three different size blocks offered. Always there are three different colored diagrams showing not only different colors of the blocks to get you excited, but also sometimes showing different value placements and also showing different um, unit rotations because that's one of the things that you can make simple changes to your blocks to create totally unique and totally different looks. To access all of the past blockbusters that we've designed, and there are more than 50 of them at this point, visit our free download page on our website. But why not consider joining our Facebook page? That way, when we create a new blockbuster, you're gonna be the first one to know about it. Print it off, add it to your quilting library, and use it as inspiration for one of your future quilting projects. Now the Tucker Trimmer tool is actually the very first fundamental tool that I created. And I created this tool to deal with one of our most basic building blocks. Squares divided by a seam. A single seam, half square triangles, multiple seams to create an hourglass unit, or this unit that we call a combination unit that has a full and a partial seam. And like all things Studio 180, I figured out that my building success was always easier if I oversized and then trim things down. So I build these shapes bigger than they need to be on purpose. And you know, trimming down a half square triangle, that's pretty easy. There's lots of tools out there. But the magic really happens when you're dealing with a unit that has multiple diagonals on it. If you look at the tool, the tool has multiple diagonal guidelines. It has guidelines for trimming units to half inch increments and guidelines for trimming units to whole inch increments. And you see a half and a whole circle, that's kind of your cue to how you place the tool on the unit. I happen to be right-handed and I'm trimming this to three and a half inches. So what I'll do is put the half circle in the upper right-hand corner, allowing me to use the two diagonals, the common and the size diagonal, to place right over top of the seams. If you happen to be left-handed, you use the tool by simply placing that half circle in the upper left-hand corner for easy use of the tools, again. But what happens is by lining up the diagonal guidelines on the diagonal seam lines, I immediately center the tool over the shape. I don't have to look at horizontal and vertical guidelines when I'm doing that trimming. I never trim very much away. I've got a clean corner, seam properly placed, lift the tool, rotate the unit 180 degrees, and when I reposition this, I'm going to look at the same diagonals, but I'm also going to look at the cleanup lines. So when I'm done, 
I know, I have a square. I have a square that's exactly the right size. All the seams are properly placed. And I'm gonna be able to build these pieces into much better blocks. I can take one and another and another and put them all together and they're all gonna meet and they're all gonna match. So the original Tucker Trimmer, Tucker Trimmer 1, does 12 different sizes, whole and half inch. We also created a Tucker Trimmer 2 that does um, quarter inch and three quarter inches. Because I'll tell you, if you've ever tried to trim one of these down to three and a quarter inches, you're gonna be really wanting to have this Tucker Trimmer 2 in your hand. And we also created the large Tucker Trimmer. This one goes all the way up to 12 inches. It has all the sizes that are in, in this one, but it's got 13 more on it. So put these tools in your hands and you are gonna end up making projects that you can be proud of. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to my square squared tool. And this is a tool that I designed to build and create these square in a square units. It's a familiar shape, but it is notoriously difficult to get these built correctly. The square square tool actually has three different sections to it. It has a series of window templates in the one section that you use to cut the square that's in the middle. And you know, those window templates make it very easy to do fussy cutting, which we sometimes want to do when we're building these units. There's a chart that gives you the cutting information that you need to be able to cut and build those oversized triangles around the edges, making the unit oversized on purpose. And then we have the trim down section. And that has a series of X's on it so that it's easy to center the tool over the shape when I go to trim it down. I've got this one here that I'm ready to trim. It's a three inch unit. And what I'm locating are the X's by the number three, here, 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 and here. They go over the seam intersections, allowing me to center the tool quickly and easily. It's set up horizontally if you happen to be trimming right-handed, and it would be set up vertically if you happen to be a left-handed trimmer, but you're using those same guidelines for that trim down. Line up the X's, make the trim, you have a clean square corner, and you now have seams that are exactly a quarter of an inch from the edge. Lift the tool, rotate the unit 180 degrees, reposition the tool with those same X's and those same diagonal broken lines, but pay attention to the cleanup line so that you know when you're done, you're gonna have a unit that's exactly the right size, that has seams in exactly the right place, that has all of the edges on the straight of the grain and gives you minimal fabric going into your trash can. That's just as important as a perfect unit at at the beginning. So we, the original square square tool does six different sizes. It does sizes from one inch up to six inch in whole inch increments. We created a larger version of this that goes from one inch all the way up to 12 inch. We call that the large square squared. And then we also have the square squared half inch. They all work the same way. They all have the same building elements. There's one thing different. If you buy the large square squared, you're gonna see that it's a two part tool. That's because if I put all of this information on one piece of plastic, it would be way too large for us to easily use in our studios. So the window templates and the charts are on part A of the tool, and then the trim down section that has the X's and the cleanup lines is part B. So think about putting these tools in your toolbox. You'll be glad that you did. They're a familiar shape and you use them a lot, and you'll use them a lot more successfully if you're using the square squared tools.
Now my large square squared is a tool that, you know what? I didn't think I really wanted. I actually made this per request. There were an awful lot of machine embroiderers who wanted to do uh, that square in a square shape with their fancy machine embroidery. So I created this tool. It's a two-part tool. It has part A that has the window templates for cutting the center squares, correct size. It has the chart on part A for cutting the side triangles, oversized. And then part B is a separate part that you use to do the trim down on this. And rather than putting it all together to make it so big and unmanageable, it's just a two-part tool, but it works the same as my original square squared. And you know, again, I didn't really think I wanted to do this because I don't do machine embroidery. But what I discovered is soon after I had this in my hand that not only was it a great tool to work on machine embroidery, but I could also do a block that's called the economy block that isn't just a square in a square, but it's a square in a square in a square. And I can do that up to 12 inches, but I can also do multiples of that because nobody says that square in the middle has to be a plain square. I can make an economy block in the middle and start to stack squares that are a square in a square in a square in a square in a square. And you know, when we figure something out like that, we have a tool, we start to play with it. What we do is we end up creating what we call a technique sheet. And the technique sheet allows us to figure out all the numbers to be able to make these stack squares in an economy blocks in very small increments all the way up to very large increments. There are charts in there that give you all the information that you need. And not only can you make stack squares, but by rearranging those colors, you can also make those infamous snail trail blocks. And, you know, when we created this tool and we were working with our certified instructors, uh, we had a rousing discussion about whether this new larger square square tool was going to be able to do a pineapple block. Well, yes, indeed it can. It's the perfect tool to be able to do that. And you can kind of see it in the middle. It's a square and a square and a square. It starts like that and then it goes beyond. There's a full length educational video on how to do that. We turned the pineapple block not into a technique sheet, but turned it into a pattern called Peach Melba. And um, there's another technique sheet that we've also developed to go along with this, and it's called the Birds of Paradise, which looks kind of like a fancy flying geese. Fancy birds, flying geese, ha, ha, ha. But you can put a fussy cut square in the middle. You can make that flying geese unit with a pieced section in the middle. There's a different kind of pieced square in the middle. And this is probably my favorite, where I'm using a shaded four patch in the middle of my Bird of Paradise. And all that information and how you do all that is contained in the technique sheet. And you can see how to do that by visiting our website. So if you're hesitating to get that large square squared in your hand, like I thought I was, don't. There's so many wonderful things that you can do with that. So um, put it in your toolbox. You'll be glad you have it. I know most of you realize that Studio 180 Design is a fantastic tool company. We have great patterns, both modern and traditional. We have books. We have techniques and processes that can't be beat. But did you know that we are also very closely linked to the Island Boutique Company? For the last several years, as they were introducing new fabric lines, we were invited to create projects to showcase these lines. And if you'd like to check out some of those patterns that we created to go along with those fabric lines, visit our website and check out the Island Boutique section. And Conversely, if you get to a quilt shop and you see an Island Boutique collection, come directly to us to pick up some of those great patterns and great tools for making those incredible quilts. Our Split Rex is another one of our fundamental tools and it's designed to build rectangles. Rectangles that are divided 
diagonally from corner to corner with a seam. Everything that you need is included right on the tool. The angled edge is what you use to cut the elongated triangles slightly bigger than they need to be so that then you can trim them down and clean them up. And there are sizes ranging on the tool from one half by one inch, little itty bitty ones, all the way up to four inches by eight inches. And you know, if you cut those elongated triangles from strips, yellow and blue, that are facing each other, you'll actually end up with mirror image units. And you can trim both those units with one tool. You don't have to buy two separate tools to do that. All the guidelines are right on the tool. If you're trimming down the unit that happens to have the seam going in this direction, you would set it up horizontally if you're right-handed, and you would set it up vertically if you're left-handed. And what you would be using is what we call the common diagonal. Placing that over top of the seam and trimming on this corner is going to perform the magic. It's going to place that seam properly so that when you stitch those future quarter of an inch lines, you actually get to keep the points. What a novel idea that is, points on your projects. But I'll trim the first corner, rotate this around, and trim the opposite corner so that every unit is exactly the right size. But if you're working with that mirror image shape, and these two are mirror images of each other, when I place that on my board, you'll notice that the seam goes in the opposite direction. So you can't use that common diagonal. Well, you could. If you flip this unit over, you can continue to use that diagonal guideline on the seam line and trim those down. But you also have the option of looking at the diagonal sizing guidelines that you can place on there for making the two inch by four inch unit and do the trim and it will give you units that have those seams properly placed to give you points. Now we're really excited because just recently we've introduced a technique sheet for the split rex tool. And the technique sheet um, is going to take you above and beyond that simple one seam rectangle to rectangles that are divided by two seams or rectangles that are divided by a seam and a half. Um, we don't have a project for these yet, but we can't wait to start putting these in some of our future designs. And speaking of designs, why don't you take a look at some of the quilts we've created using the split rex tool. Tuckerize. Some of you know what that means. Some of you may not. Many of you already tuckerize your patterns. Everybody should. Now, for those of you who don't know what tuckerizing means, I'm going to read you the definition. Tuckerize. It's a verb. It means to convert traditional quilt construction methods to Studio 180 designs, tools, and techniques. Or in other words, to use Studio 180 design tools with a pattern written using traditional techniques. Now, this is something that is a very valuable skill that you're gonna to wanna to add to your bag of tricks. And it's not hard, but what you're gonna to need to do are a couple of steps. The first thing you're gonna to need to do when you look at your pattern is recognize shapes that can be tuckerized. Identify which tools or which techniques we use to build those shapes. And that's pretty easy too. You can download our free um, unit guide from our website. And then you're gonna need to adjust your cutting so that you can take advantage of the tuckerizing of your project. Now, let me give you an example. This quilt behind me is my Lynx quilt. And several years ago, um, I created that quilt, sent it to Fonz and Porter, and it was accepted for publication. It actually made it onto the front cover. And when that happens, I don't write the instructions. The magazine actually writes the instructions for the project. And they did a great job when it came to talking about the Lemoyne stars, using my strip piecing method, using my rapid fire Lemoyne star tool. But when it came to the simpler shapes that surround the smaller star, those flying geese and shaded four patches, they chose methods that I didn't use, nor, and they're perfect 
shapes to tuckerize. Those flying geese, what they had you do in the instructions was create them with the rectangle and square method where you mark and you fold it back like this. That method for one block would give me this much waste. To tuckerize that, I would use the wing clipper method. Fast flying geese end up with four units slightly oversized and trim them down and end up instead of all those triangles as waste with this little bit of snippets. So you actually save fabric. You use less and you create better units. And when it comes to these shaded four patches that are in the corner, again, the writers at the magazine suggested that you build those with individual square, small triangle, small triangle, and a large triangle, cutting each one specific and trying to put them together perfectly. I know with my shaded four patch technique, I can cut two strips and two rectangles, create those four units, again, with minimal waste going into my trash can. So you can see tuckerizing is something that's very beneficial. It's going to be more efficient. It's going to be more successful. And you are going to build the best quilts of your life if you start to tuckerize your project. But remember, do it first before you cut, because if you cut all those individual shapes, you're pretty much locked in to doing the way that it was written rather than a tuckerizing method. Now, one of our more recently introduced uh, tools is actually the four patch square up. And you're probably thinking, really? You use a tool to square up your four patches? Well, I kind of thought the same thing. A couple years ago, I got talked into doing a project. It had well over 300 of these four patches in them. And I thought, I'm a good quilter. I can do this. So I started piecing them precision. And I went through the first batch and they weren't quite as precise as I wanted them to be. Ah, no problem. I know how to make things bigger. So I just oversized my strips, made the units a little oversized, grabbed a regular ruler and started trimming them down. And you know what? I was cursing every single time I placed a regular ruler on there. I thought, doggone it. I know how to make a tool. So I created the four patch square for those of you who like to bring the same amount of precision to a simple unit that you have when you create your other units. The four patch square is a tool that's pretty complete. On it, there is a chart that gives you the suggested oversized strips that we like to use to create our four patches slightly bigger than they need to be. And then there are two trim down sections. There's a trim down section that deals with half inch increments and there's a trim down section that deals with whole inch increment because the tool does 12 different sizes from little itty bitty one half inch finished, one inch finished, all the way up to four patches that are finishing to six inches. And what I'll do is when I go to trim down my oversized four patch is find the bullseye. This is going to be a three inch unit. So I'm looking at the bullseye for the number three and placing it right in the center of that intersection. I've got north and south, east and west guidelines for easy alignment. And I can trim up, clean up that little bit so I don't have the unevenness that I had when I was trying to do them precisely. And that's a right handed trim. And again, for left handed cutters, what you will do is just position the tool vertically so that you can cut in that direction. But after I've trimmed the first corner, I'll simply pick up the tool, rotate the unit 180 degrees, reposition, looking at the same bullseye, looking at the same north, south, east, west guidelines, and also looking at my cleanup lines so that I know that this unit is properly sized. And when I go to maybe put this unit with another unit, maybe I want to team that up with a flying goose unit. Maybe I want to team that up with an hourglass unit. You know, that's what makes this whole process work. Oversizing and trimming down will ensure that the edges line up, but they're also going to ensure that the centers line up. Yahoo, that's a good thing. And we're also exploring this four patch trimmer um, in different ways. Uh, we've got a, a technique sheet out there right now that's called the offset four patch, and that's going to allow me to take the four patches and create those disappearing nine patch type units. And how you do that is on our video. So if you want to see more about that offset four patch technique sheet, head to our website and take a look there. But don't hesitate. Put this tool in your toolbox. You're going to be really glad that you've got a tool that works with these simple units.
so much for joining us. And hopefully, you've had an opportunity to learn or discover a thing or two. If you have any questions, join us on Saturday, December 5th from 1230 to 130, and that's Eastern Time, on Facebook for a live chat where I'll do my best to address any of those questions you may have and to learn about our limited time show special. Please visit our website for all the details. And tomorrow, come back for even more demonstrations on tools and techniques that I've developed for those bucket list star projects that you may have avoided in the past. Mm -hmm.